Here on the left, you see what that looks like. Each link has meaningful words as anchor text, and you can easily spot what the link will take you to. On the right, you see a page that doesn't use meaningful anchor text, and that isn't a good user experience, especially when you try to quickly scan the page and find the right link to use. Today, I would like to talk to you about uh, links. I know, I know. Ah, this topic is one of the most popular and evergreen topics in SEO. I would like to focus on internal links today. A lot of this episode also applies to external links though. Let's look at this website. You landed here looking for tips on food for your newly arrived kitten. You saw the guide for taking care of kittens and read through it. But do you know where to go next when you're looking for information on food for kittens? Hmm. Let's try this version of the page instead. Anywhere that you'd want to check out here? Ah, you'll probably notice the links in the navigation and the links in the article and maybe you saw links elsewhere on the page. And that's what internal links are for and why they matter. They help your users identify the next steps to take and they connect individual pages on your site to each other. Now, should you link to everything everywhere like this page does? <laughs> no, of course not. Overdoing it doesn't make it better and I would like to ask you to apply some critical judgment here. So what are the next logical steps? How does my content relate to other content I've got? then link to these things where it makes sense without overdoing it. All right, so we've talked about how users use links to navigate your website, but how does this relate to Google search? Well, Googlebot uses links as well. Googlebot uses internal links primarily for two things, discovering pages on your site and understanding the relation of pages on your site. Googlebot always tries to discover as many of your pages as possible, so whenever it finds a URL in your pages, Googlebot might try crawling it as well. But there are a few things you can do to make it clear to your users and Googlebot that something is a link. HTML has an element dedicated for links, the A element. For an A element to be a proper link, it should have a URL in its href attribute. This can either be a relative or absolute URL, Either way is fine. Some developers, however, try to do clever things with other elements like spans, divs, or button elements. But fundamentally, if it is behaving like a link, it should better be a link. So here's a summary of what is a good practice for links in your HTML and what is not. Besides these technicalities, users and bots alike prefer meaningful anchor text. Here on the left, you see what that looks like. Each link has meaningful words as anchor text, and you can easily spot what the link will take you to. On the right, you see a page that doesn't use meaningful anchor text, and that isn't a good user experience, especially when you try to quickly scan the page and find the right link to use. All right, let's summarize what we've talked about today. So links are important for users and bots to find related content on a page. Use the appropriate HTML to make links and give them meaningful anchor text to help users quickly find the right link for where they want to go. Also, links help users and bots to understand your content structure, so use them reasonably, not too little, not too many. Leave us a comment if you want more technical content on Google Search Central and what topics we should cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and see you soon. All right. Enough SEO, time to go swimming.